So in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this propane forge burner. Um, this originally was going to be for a coffee can forge. You, I have another video. You can check that out if you're interested. But um, this burner ended up, I making it, made it a little too large. So it's not going to work for that coffee can forge because it's just way too powerful. Uh, so I'm making another forge uh, coming soon. But anyways, the burner's belt works really well. Uh, I encourage you to watch the whole video because I know I'm shooting this intro after I have the, the burner all built. But uh, I had to make uh, some modifications to it as I was building it. So it was some trial and error. But uh, I, in the end, I ended up with an awesome result. So this burner works really well. So I really encourage you just to watch the whole video all the way through. It's a little long, but uh, you know it'll be worth it if you want to make a decent working burner. Here is the burner in action. This is what uh, what the final result looks like. Works really well, so this is a quick preview. So the torch, this torch here for heating up a forge, my coffee can forge isn't quite hot enough. It, it works really well, but uh, I'd like to get it just a little bit hotter so it heats up quicker. So I'm going to build my own. So this is my attempt at it. So I went to Home Depot and I sourced out some parts. I spent some time in the aisle and just try to fit it something together to make um, to make my own tor uh, forge burner. Um, essentially replicating uh, this orifice type, this uh, Venturi style type of burner. So just using regular fittings. So this, these are the fittings that I was able to source out. There might be a more efficient way of doing it. But this is the way I was able to do it with the minimal amount of hassle for having to do any type of machining. This just requires uh, just some minor tools and some drilling. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to go through the parts. So the parts. Uh, I'm building this as I go, so these parts might change. So uh, this is just my first go at it. So I have a, a pipe reducing coupler that I'm going to use for the nozzle flare. Um, this I might change up. Uh, basically it's going to be this part on the, the torch and I might thread something in that or I might make it bigger. I'm not quite sure if the body of the pipe, this pipe here, the body, uh, this tube, it'll represent this tube, is large enough because I need to be able to drill some holes in it to make these uh, intake holes where the gas, uh, the propane, and the and the air mix so that might need to be bigger but I'm going to see what happens it depends on how big uh, your orifice hole is this is a coupler to join this to this union over here and I'll show you how this all fits together but I'll just go through the parts so got that guy got this pipe cap this will be the part that you can change and put in different, um, drill out different holes for the orifice. So that's where the propane is going to come through. This is going to attach to that. This uh, nipple, so this is a 1 8 uh, male international pipe or male iron pipe um, by 2 inch long. This is a union, so um, you can see here it's beveled in so this is for matting up against another piece of uh, of a pipe or another uh, piece of brass so there's no uh, thread um, pipe sealant that's going to go on this side uh, but I'm not going to be using it like that anyway but this just happened to work out really well that this part fits in this and I'll, I'll get to why that's important in a minute and then I have a pex uh, sorry a pipe hex bushing one quarter inch by one eighth so that's going to go from your 1 8 which is this guy here up to a quarter inch which is this coupler here and the reason why is so I could bring it up so it fits onto for me anyway to get propane to it I'm going to use this um, propane or this gas fitting which is a quick release for my hose over here and I'll get to that in a minute you're going to need either pipe dope gas rated or um, gas rated Teflon tape or tape so this is really important don't use the white stuff for plumbing because that's not rated for gas and then I have a regulator mine's adjustable it goes from 0 to 15 psi 
You might be able to get away with just using uh, other types of regulators, but uh, it depends on how how adjustable you want it because um, I've made other burners before and this works really well. I can really get the flame down nice and low because typically on on a valve like this, you don't get a lot of control using this valve. So this is kind of a regulator built in, but it's tank pressure coming here and then you're using this to adjust the size of the flame. It works okay, but this over here will give you way more uh, finer control. And then of course I have my hose and then a quick release coupler or fitting here that works with this. And then I have a, and it's got a built-in valve, which is really handy. Okay, so the reason why I am using this flare union is because the inside diameter is the perfect diameter to center up my orifice pipe. So this pipe here. So because what I'm trying to do is get this as straight as possible when the propane flows through. Um, so that's kind of important. So using this, I was able to get it lined up perfectly right in the center. So how that works, so this is my orifice, which I already drilled out the hole, but I'll show you how to drill that out after, uh, after I assemble this. Um, not exactly doing it in the perfect order. So uh, see now, that is lined up center. And it fits on this coupler. I'm just doing a, a dry fit here, so I'm not using any tape. And also I should mention, these are tapered fittings, not to be confused with compression fittings. Compression fittings, um, well, a compression fitting actually would be this end on this side here. So the threads are not tapered. Whereas here, this is tapered in and it's meant so that you need to use Teflon tape on it or a pipe dope. Okay, so just, just, just as an aside. So that goes in like that. And what I'll end up doing is soldering this into place here. And then this piece, the body, goes on like that. And then this is the flare or the nozzle. But I don't know if I'm going to use that. So I'm just going to leave that off for now. So now I have my body and I'm going to drill out holes here. Now because I think this piece of pipe is only reaching to about here, I'd like it to be up here. I am going to trim down this coupler a little bit, but that's it depends on what you have available, what you're able to get. The problem I was having to get this nipple, I was able to get it in a 3 inch, but the problem was the, side, the outside diameter was a little bit bigger and it wouldn't fit in here. So uh, I had to work with my this 2 inch, so I can, I'm adjusting it as I go. So, then we have our bushing, which then now is going to in, bring it up so that it will work with this adapter, with this coupler, which now brings it up to this quick release nipple, so I can get propane in it, which then allows me for my connection to my hose and regulator like that. Now, the only thing is, oh, make sure this is off in order for it to click in. Um, there. The this is kind of messy, but it was able. I was able to build this just from buying the parts at the store. So that kind of simplifies things as opposed to what you could also do if you didn't want to mess around with all of this is you could have a cap get a cap at the end of this pipe drill out that hole and then have that fit in right like that so then you'd have a cap and that would eliminate a lot of these all these unions and all this messiness but that would mean you have to drill it out perfectly round and then you'd have to center it and then solder it in this, I'm just trying it so that it's uh, the simplest way to go. It might cost an extra 15 bucks in parts, but um, we'll see what happens. It does seem a little simpler. So anyways, that was just an aside. Okay, next up, I'm um, going to show you how to drill out this. 
and um, you need really small bit for that. Um, I used a 130, 132 drill bit and I also have some on order that are smaller they haven't gotten here yet I'm gonna try it with the 132 and uh, see how it works if not uh, I'll, all I have to do is just remove this and buy a new one drill another hole with a different bit and pop it on I suspect that this pipe might not have be large enough for me to get the air holes that I need for the proper mixture so next I'm gonna uh, drill this out drill some holes in this pipe and fit it all together. All right, so I'm gonna go do all that and we'll put it together and see if it works. So we have the end cap mounted up in the vise on my drill press. And then on the drill press, I have a teeny tiny drill bit. Now this, I forget what the size is in the number. I don't know if it's a number 56 or 58 or something like that, but what it is, uh, I believe it's 132 so it's pretty tiny actually it's not quite that small I'm gonna try this one and if it doesn't work I got some more on order uh, I got a whole bunch of them and uh, I'll just get another cap and replace it and drill out another one because it's threaded it's easy to change so I can try out a few different uh, uh, orifices so alright I'm going to drill the hole so it's if you don't have a drill press you can do this with just a regular drill you just got to be really straight and go slow and use cutting oil um, all right let's go all right gonna add a little cutting oil to this Okay, that is a pretty centered hole. It was drilled pretty easy right through the brass with some cutting oil and a sharp drill bit. So I have my holes drilled for the intake, for the air. Next, I'm going to fit this. I have my coupler on here. I'm going to fit this with my union in this little, again, this so it lines up nice and centered for the orifice. And I have the, the hole drill for the orifice. I'll show you how to do that. So, when I put this all together and I look, I want that to be fairly close to the holes. Not right at the holes, but below it. But if I were to have it so that I can get to these threads, it's it's down into here. I want to bring it up a bit, and depending on what parts you have available to, you might be able to get away if you had a longer one of these nipples. I don't, so I'm going to have to just do a little slight modification, and I'm going to cut back this union here. And then what I'll do is I'll solder this into this so that way it holds and it's nice and strong and then it'll go on to my other onto the where the uh, un, the uh, bushing is and then onto the propane okay so I'm just gonna cut this back I won't bother to show that because you might not need to do that step uh, I'm just kinda giving you the idea and the theory on how to make this just from the regular parts you can get at the hardware store so I'm gonna cut that back and then I'll solder this in
Now I'm just prepping to solder this nipple in to the union. Get nice and clean. And I've cut this back. So it's gonna go like that. I don't have a brush, so I'm using a Q-tip to apply some flux to this. Oh well. Alright, I got all my parts here now, and I'm going to now put this guy together. So I got this guy all soldered up nice, nice silver solder, nice joint. I can see in here that the solder wicked all the way through. So, um, so for that guy, I'm going to put the orifice on here. So I'm going to put a little, little thread tape on that. Now when you put your tape on, you want it to go in the direction, with the last fold to go in the direction of the way you're screwing on. Just so, because if you're screwing against it, it'll unravel. You want to snug these up. Okay, so that's that guy. Next, we have our tube. Probably don't really need any tape on this because there's not really any any uh, gas going through it, but I'll put some on just the same. Anyways, I'll snug that up here in a bit. I'm not going to bother to do it on camera because I'll just show you. I'm just showing you how it fits up. Then we got the bushing, which will go on here. Lastly, and then this flare, I'm not going to bother with any tape on that because that's where the burn is going to be. So that is one assembled torch. So I'm going to tighten everything up and uh, I guess we'll see, uh, see if there's any leaks and then test fire it. I won't bother to show the leak testing, leak testing, you just pop it on, squirt some you know, bubbly soapy water on it, see if there's any leaks, uh, and then try it. And again, I just wanted to mention, number one, uh, you know, we're playing with propane, flammable gas, uh, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, don't just attempt this just by watching my video, you should have a little experience in this, you at least be used to working around torches and, and propane before, uh, before attempting this, because this isn't... This isn't, uh, you know, the safest thing to do. It's not 
really dangerous, but again, you just got to use some common sense. You're playing with flammable materials, flammable gas. And the other thing I want to mention is, again, how you are going to get propane to this is entirely up to you. I'm using, again, a regulator with this quick release. You might be using something different. You could clamp a hose on here. You know, whatever you do, it's up to you. It's your decision. Uh, but I don't have any responsibility around that. Um, so anyways, just wanted to say that, uh, you know, use some common sense. Be careful. All right, I'm going to tighten everything up, and then we'll, let's give her a fire. Oh, this is the first test run. I got it at about 3 or 4 PSI. It's starting to rain, so my camera's getting wet, so I got to do this quick. but it's a little bit off because the flare isn't very good and I think I need to enlarge the air holes to get the, uh, to get the mixture right but as you can see it's working nice blue flame a little bit of orange at the top here so all right it's starting to rain so uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some modifications to it and then uh, I'll redo uh, all the to this video so I've been playing around with this since my initial uh, test run. I got rid of the the cup, the adapter that I had threaded on the end here, and I made this flare out of some old sheet metal I had laying around. You can see the paint in there still isn't completely burnt off. Um, but anyways, nor you'd ideally make this out of stainless steel. So. I had this on here and all I did was I drilled some holes and I used some self-tapping screws to hold it on and I cut off the ends so that inside here inside here they wouldn't be protruding in and obstruct the flow of gas so now after some test runs what I've noticed is that number one this needs to be longer and I could have just bought a brass extension, but it wasn't quite long enough. I wanted to extend it out to here. So what I did was I picked up some galvanized, some galvanized pipe instead. And what that allowed me to do is really extend it out. So I'm going to give that a a try. And the reason why I got galvanized was I wasn't able to get um, just black iron pipe at Home Depot here. Um, so black iron is the type you ideally should use because this is galvanized and when it heats up the zinc will burn off and it's just not good for you. It's pretty toxic. But I'm going to grind that off, clean the inside out. I'm probably going to treat it in some acid. I, I looked up online that you can remove the galvanization with some acid. Um, so Anyways, if you're going to go that route, just uh, keep that in mind. You know, use black iron pipe. So, now with this extended, and then the flare, that really pushes it out. Because what I was finding was this was getting a little too hot. Uh, I'm going to try this out and see what happens. Um, this is just regular half inch. It fits, uh, you know, it fits in with this adapter. So it's relatively, this pipe is really cheap, way cheaper than this. This is like, I think like two bucks in in pipe and coupling so it's uh, it's really cheap um, okay so I'm gonna try to get the galvanization off this piece here because that's where it's gonna heat up and then I'll uh, I'll do a video of test firing okay so I got the galvanization off the pipe I soaked it in vinegar I did a separate video I posted that already so if you need to do that all you do is just soak your uh, galvanized pipe in some vinegar overnight and it'll remove it or you can use muriatic acid and it removes it way quicker um, but I didn't have any of that so I just used vinegar and you can see it's starting to rust all over it so I know it's removed the galvanization so I uh, shouldn't put off any toxic fumes should this get overheated the main part that's going to get overheated is up here I put a nozzle flare on it screwed on self-tapping screws so I drilled some holes in this and then just put some self-tapping screws in it. This end got the air holes drilled out just like in the brass version. So it's all ready to go, thread it in. Let's fire it up. Okay, I got it in a stand here because I'm gonna 
work with the camera. So I have this turned on around 5 psi. Gas is on. I forgot to mention these holes I drilled out are a quarter of an inch. So at a quarter of an inch with a one, 132 inch drill bit, I get a really nice flame. Now, over here, this is my adjustable regulator. So I get this to focus in. I'm at 7 psi. Okay, not 5. Anyways, you can hear the difference as I turn it down. That's at about 3 psi. Now I'm going to crank it up. There's at about 12 psi. I think the sweet spot for this burner is around 7 to 8. So that's burning real nice. Pipe's nice and cool here. Get a really nice flame, working real good. All right, so that's really successful. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, post them in the comments below.